Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I made this mixed media piece using various art style and techniques. We're gonna start in 3D where we're gonna do a basic modeling and texturing. Then we're gonna move to frame by frame animation. And finally, we're gonna put together everything in After Effects. So with that said, let's begin. So if you guys watch my process, I always start with a concept drawing. And again, it doesn't need to be a perfect one. At this stage, I'm just exploring the ideas in my head. I'm just making quick sketches and seeing what looks good. Once I did a bunch of thumbnail drawing, I chose one to move forward with. Again, I really kept it loose. Now in the concept, I added some notes as you can see. And those things we're gonna explore once we go through the compositing phase in After Effects. Now, before we jump into the actual process, I want to clear one thing out. The softwares I'm going to be using in this tutorial really doesn't matter. Let me explain. For the 3D part, I'm using Cinema 4D and I'm only using some basic features of this 3D package. Now, if you don't have Cinema 4D, it's completely fine. These tips can be translated to any other 3D package. So whatever you're using, it's fine use whatever you're comfortable with and there are so many 3d packages out there just choose one and you'll be fine and the same goes for the 2d drawing software i am using krita even though i got a adobe subscription and i got adobe animate i used krita because i was exploring it and it seems nice that's the only reason just make sure whatever frame by frame animation software you're using they should have these features they can import and export animation image sequences and they have onion skinning which will let you see the previous and the forward frames of your animation. Again, focus on the methods, not on the tools or the softwares. So in Cinema 4D, I took a simple cylinder primitive and added a few cuts. Then I converted it to a polygon object so I can manipulate the points and the edges. I'm just moving the points and the edges around to make it resemble a digital pen. Once the body was done, I took a cone primitive and manipulated its shape to resemble a pointer. I dragged it inside the pen body as a child. I also added a taper deformer to the body and adjusted it. Once I was happy, I basically baked the deformer into the object. So if I delete the deformer, the shape will still look the same. And that's all I did when it comes to the modeling part. Now it's time for the texturing. I used After Effects to make it because I knew I just gonna do some basic color and shapes, nothing fancy. If I'm not doing any sort of drawing or brush work, I usually stay in After Effects. I knew I could make it with just some basic shapes and masks. I just got this one half tone texture and scattered it using different scale and position values. At the end, I also added a gradient using another solid layer with mask and this is how the final texture look. Back in Cinema 4D, I created a new material and turned off all the shading properties and turned only the luminance channel and then plugged the paint texture inside it. As the name suggests, it works with the texture's luma values. So based on the texture's brightness, it's gonna output a flat color shading, which will not affect it by lights. Plus, we're not gonna put any lights in our scene anyways. Now I'm using a cylindrical projection to wrap the texture around my object. For those who are unfamiliar with 3D texturing, it's basically creating a 2D flat image that wraps around your 3D geometry. Now there is something called the UV mapping which will basically gonna do that properly cause it's actually based on the surface of that 3D geometry. For this example, I'm just using an automatic cylindrical projection to wrap my 2D image over this 3D cylinder. I had to continuously play with the scale, rotation and the position of this texture to get it where I like it. I also repeated it to fit my object. It's not 100% accurate, there's a bit of stretch overall, but for this example, this works. And the way we're gonna put our camera, it's gonna be all fine. Time for animation. I drew a path and animated the pin on that path from point A to point B. 
the reason why i attached the pen to that path because if i wanted to change the animation direction i just need to change the path point instead of the entire animation i basically animated a speed ramp where the object going to come fast then stay slow and then going to go out of the frame really fast i was constantly manipulating the velocity of the graph to get an overall speed right I also made sure I get some rotation too in the animation for that dynamic look. I used the standard Cinema 4D render to render it. No third party renderer, just basic Cinema 4D render engine. Before I rendered it, I made sure the project is set to 16 fps both in the project settings and in the render settings. Totally forgot to mention that in the beginning. Now let's move on to the frame by frame animation. I opened up Krita and created a new document and the first thing I did was set the frame rate to 16. I imported all my render frames and pin it in the timeline. I also imported a guide layer which I rendered from the Cinema 4D. It's just a path so I have something to guide my smears. I changed the background color to something less bright so I'm not staring at bright white all the time. It doesn't affect the animation in any way it's just a personal preference. I created a new layer and named it smears. I selected a nice pen from the brush selection and started drawing. I'm just drawing some basic smear frames as you can see. It's just few frames in the beginning and in the end. I'm constantly going forward and backward to change the length and overall look of those smears. Once I was done with the back smears, I moved forward and started drawing the front ones. Again, just a lot of moving forward and backward and trying to match the overall velocity. As you can see, I drew more frames than the actual 3D render because I think that will give us a bit more time on the screen and it's really going to sell the speed of that object. Once all the drawings were done, this is what we got. Final step to combine everything. In After Effects, I imported my Cinema 4D render and Krita smear frames along with few extra texture assets. Make sure all the frame rates are interpreted correctly. In our example, at 16. I created a new comp and dragged my Cinema 4D and Krita smear frames inside them. Then I dragged that comp into a new comp called Final Build. Then I imported that guide layer I used in Krita here and created a new shape layer named it wave underscore one. I basically animated the stroke point frame by frame here to the pen. After this, I started modifying the stroke taper to make it white at the end and pointier in the beginning of the pen. Once it was done, I animated the stroke width going from around 350 to zero. I started playing with the wave properties of the stroke and animated its wavelength to match the velocity of the pen. I also faded the wave amount towards the end so it's more like a flat line when the pen leaves the screen. After this I duplicated the wave layers and started offsetting them in the timeline. Because of this the layer on the top the path got offsetted So I had to redo couple of the path points to align again with the pen. So it's all good. Then I recolored the wave layers using the color palette I created and pre-comp all three of them into their own individual comps. I went into each composition and started adding different textures using the preserve underline transparency button. I just played with the different color combination and blending mode to get it where I kind of liked it. Once this was done, back in the final build comp, I selected the first wave and added a Venetian blinds to get a bit more dynamic look overall. After this, I started working on the BG. I added a gradient ramp to a solid and started adjusting their color and position. I imported an image sequence and started playing with its transform properties and blending mode. I even added a bezier warp to create an interesting shape but in the end I just end up adding a venetian blinds with some rough edges to get some subtle lines in the background.
I even made a lens flare with some shape layers and tried to add it to the main comp with the rest of the animation. But in the end I thought it was a bit too much for the eyes. So I chose not to include it in the final animation. To wrap things up I used my usual tricks. I bought in a grungy speckle texture and used a simple choker to take out some of the detailing. Animated its position and set the keyframe to hold keyframes and added a loop out expression. Duplicated it, changed the color to white and repeated the same steps. And finally, tie up everything with a little bit of noise. And that's it. That's how I created this entire piece. I know it's a lot to take in but I wanted to give you guys an overall explanation of the entire process. I know you guys have a lot of questions regarding these methods, so please do feel free to ask and I will try my best to answer them all. I really love these kind of techniques to combine different types of animations and I am actually experimenting with making more of these types of videos, so stay tuned for those. As for the After Effects project file, you can download it from the link in the description. This is the first time I am putting a price on a project file but it's just $1 and that includes all the assets used in this AE file. I hope you guys can support me, means a lot to me. Thank you all for watching, leave a like if you liked it, comment down your question or suggestion and subscribe for more motion graphics content. Take care of yourself and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye guys.